In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can make your own acid flux for soldering sheet metal and stainless steel using ordinary swimming pool muriatic acid available at home improvement stores and a carbon zinc heavy duty battery. It has to be one of these heavy duty types as long as it's not alkaline. In the process of creating the acid flux, we're going to take the muriatic acid pour it into a small container like this, maybe about that high up, maybe about three, three ounces or so. And we're going to remove the zinc from this battery. We're going to peel this label off and strip the outer casing off. We're going to wipe that down clean and we're going to drop it into the muriatic acid. It is highly recommended that you use safety goggles and gloves and have a garden hose nearby in case you splash yourself with the acid and also have some baking soda on standby in case you get it all over your skin you can neutralize the acid with the baking soda okay we're going to remove this part you don't really need the gloves it's just some zinc and carbon you can put it on but I'm not You want to remove the outer shell. This is the zinc right here. All this part on the outside. All right. This right here we could toss out. That's the zinc housing. We're going to remove this part. We need this whole layer of zinc on the outside. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pry this open on the end. Remove this end piece with the positive terminal. Throw it away. We're going to gut this whole thing out. Make sure it's perfectly clean. And drop it into the acid and allow it to dissolve. I'm using a pair of just diagonal cutters like this. Just flare open the top. Inside should be a whole bunch of um, black garbage around the carbon center. Okay. Let's grab that. Okay. Very interesting. All right, once this is pried off, you're going to be left with the negative, which is the zinc, the positive, which is the carbon post in the middle, and there's electrolyte between the carbon and the zinc, which you'll see in a minute, but there's a black piece of plastic pushing down on it, so I've got to reach in there and remove that plastic ring and lift it up. Reach in. There it goes, it's a seal. See the seal is lifting. It should be packed with powder, let's see. Okay. That's the electrolyte packed in around the edge. We're gonna scrape that out with a screwdriver, all of it. Before we do that, Let's grab the post in the middle, twist it, and pull it out. Okay, that's the carbon right there. I'm going to probably save that. Take a peek again. You see it's all falling apart in there. Now we're just going to get the screwdriver and scrape all of it out. That could be a little messy. 
Not exactly a clean job here. Try not to get this black on anything because it makes a mess. It leaves marks on everything. And try and keep it off your hands now, now that we're in it. Here's a bottom. Bottom's nice and shiny in there. Now we are inside of it. All right. The walls are kind of dirty, so we're going to scrape those clean. And I'll be right back. There we go. That's the inside. Okay, so you want to let it cool off in between adding all the zinc to the acid. So this is cool again, so I'm going to add a little bit more. You're going to continue to do this until all the zinc is dissolved into the acid. Getting hot. Probably right 130. Pretty hot. And definitely can let it cool down after this one. Alright, let that settle. You'll see the residual carbon from the inside of the zinc is separated. It's on top, so we can take that off at the end. Okay. Do another piece. Allow the container to cool. You can also put a bowl with water and set this bottle in the bowl with the water to prevent the outside of the bottle from getting too hot. Okay, the entire amount is now dissolved into this, um, into this little bottle. And when I was all finished, I took a plastic spoon and I scooped up the little bit of carbon sediment that was on top. And then I took a Q-tip and just wiped away any little excess. Now we have a very good mix here. It's clear. And that is ready to be used as a flux for soldering sheet metal and stainless steel, which I will demonstrate in a minute. Show you how this flux is used. This is a piece of stainless steel. It's off of an old microwave oven. A little bit of surface rust on it, but you can see it's stainless. All right. Okay, we're going to solder stainless steel right now. Take some 100 grit sandpaper. Sand it really, really good. Okay, wipe it. We're going to use a propane torch. A paintbrush to dip into the flux we made. I'm going to brush the flux all over it, let it sit a minute, heat the metal up while applying the solder. Once it starts to flow, get a stainless steel wire brush and work it into the metal. Once you see that it's worked in, then you could apply more solder.
Put that in good. Work it in. Okay. Apply heat. Next to it, you want to apply the heat. Keep touching. Keep, keep the. Uh, there you go. Keep it going. Keep it going. Now, as it's heating, work it in. That's it. That's connected right there. This right here, this solder, is fused now. As you can see, the solder took very well to the stainless steel. The trick is, once you see the solder starting to flow, you have to wire brush it into the surface. Once it's wire brushed in, it, you'll see it fuse. Once it's fused to the metal, then you could apply more. But if you just touch one spot, it, it's not going to work. So you want to make sure you apply the solder and immediately brush it into the surface, work it into the surface, then apply more solder. Okay, that's the spot that I did. I'm going to get a pair of pliers and bend on it. <clears throat> As you can see, it's not lifting. That is on there good. <laughs>